Seth, looks like um, Florida State uh, plays a little more small ball maybe than y'all do. Uh, is that the big challenge? Uh, they got a, they look like they got a lot of speed. They like to run. Um, is that what you see? I don't think the challenge is there. I think the challenge is in their experience. They have, you know, kids that have won a national championship on this team. I think challenges in their pitching staff. I think there's a few challenges throughout, um, you know, with what they bring to us. Beth, is this about as balanced as, as this lineup can be? I mean, I know there have been points where one through nine have been really good, but this this regional looked like everybody was hitting the ball hard one through nine. Yeah, I think we have a great lineup. I think we have great hitters. It was nice to see them execute and ha find the success that we've known they could have all season long. So um, we're happy with the spot our lineup is in and hope they can keep it going. How much of that, too, especially with George's home run and I think Shelby's home run was to the opposite field. Was there was there an emphasis on hitting the ball hard the other way? Um, not necessarily. I think just kind of taking what they gave us and, you know, just executing our best swings. That was the whole key. What have y'all seen from Catherine Sandicock um, in the circle and how do y'all plan on going against her in the rest of the seminal bullpen? Well, she's, she throws hard, throws really good velocity, you know, not something unlike what we've seen. We've seen a lot of good velocity in the SEC. Um, you know, we've seen 70 a few times this year or so, but um, I know she can knock on that door and she throws hard. So she'll definitely be a challenge. And then the challenge is the way they um, match up with multiple pitchers that do different things things I think that's always a challenge trying to prepare for both directions and uh, two different looks. Coach what do you remember about that doubleheader in 2018 I know one of the games went 11 innings just how long did that day feel? Um, I feel like I remember every bit of it I feel like I remember every pitch um, you know I think it's one of those things that's still you know, a tough day to handle, a tough day to think about. You think about the things you wish would have gone differently more than the things that went great, unfortunately. But um, there's a couple of moments we'd like to have back and i um, glad we're going to get a shot at it again this weekend. How much does it benefit having a lot of the girls who were there? Amanda Doyle, Shelby Sinceri, Leah Andrews, and I think Taryn Antoine also in the lineup, getting to see them again and just the experience and the nerves of handling a super regional. I think it creates even more emotion than there already is in this weekend, which is an interesting dynamic. You know, um, I think there's already so much on the table this weekend, super regionals, but then you add to it the drama or emotion or whatever you want to call it of playing them three times in their college career for a super regional. It just takes it to a whole different level, I think. And I think both teams, you know, we're friends with their coaches. We've known them for a long time. I think all those things are tough emotions to handle when you just repeatedly see them over and over and over again. It magnifies it so much. So I think it'll be interesting how they handle the emotion. The majority of our team has never been to the postseason, been in a regional. They hadn't even been in an SEC series. So uh, that goes out the window for those guys. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like that the messaging that you've been delivering the last couple of weeks has kind of been dialing back the pressure or, you know, trying to minimize the moment so that it doesn't become overwhelming. Is that accurate? I would say yes. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's really easy to let it snowball on you and let it get too big. And I think that's just the opposite of where we want to be this time of year. I think we've put the work in, you know, it's, it's too late to solve all the world's problems right now before the super regional. So you've got to trust what you've done all season is enough and trust that your process works and, you know, then just go out and try to execute your process and hope that it's enough and hope you've done enough. And I feel confident that our team has. You and Lonnie, obviously, are two of the most successful head coaches that also handle the pitching staff. Take me through that mindset of balancing those two, and what do you see from Lonnie that stands out that makes her so successful on her end? Honestly, I think I'm nothing like her, um, and I think there's a lot of things she does that I would love to have as a part of my game, but I could never pull it off. I think she's maybe the best communicator in the game. She just has a way about her that she can just say something and 
people just want to do it for her. Um, she just speaks differently to the players, has this kind of special relationship. Um, I just think the way she communicates and speaks with her players is incredible. Um, and I think all of us should you know, look to develop that angle that she has, but it is a gift and not everyone has it. I, I think I'm a lot more fundamental, a lot more mechanical. Um, I don't want to say I'm more tactical, but I think I'm a little more on that side of it where she's more of like, just can get them to do it on feel and emotion. And it's a really cool thing that she does. Obviously it's been well known. You've played them a bunch. Do you even go back to previous matchups to pick up anything or is are you just focus on this year's teams in particular? How do you balance that from a preparation standpoint? I'm going to be honest. I woke up Monday morning and thought to myself, oh, yeah, Sydney, Cheryl, we're doing this. Mason, we do this. I, I like it. We played them so much and it's so important this time of year that I woke up already knowing how we had attacked him in the past. Like, I don't know that that's necessarily what we're going to do this year, but I didn't even have to go back and look at what we've done in the past because I already knew that's like how big the super regionals are. And that feel is like, I already knew what we've done. So I, for the most part, have just stayed in the present and just tried to see what this season has looked like for them and tried to create a plan based around this season. Shelby's mentioned that her experience pitching at Minnesota, you know, playing at Tallahassee has helped her this year in the postseason. Uh, for the new ones that haven't gone through a super regional, how big was it to have this at home as opposed to on the road where you've had veteran teams in the past win a super regional that can handle that? Whereas this group, hey, you, you know, let's just handle it at home. Yeah, I don't think they have any clue of how nice it is to have it at home, you know, especially the way we drew this Thursday. Friday, Saturday timeline, just not having to pack your stuff and get on the road and getting to just be in your own beds longer, prepare longer, have your field and your stuff longer. I think this short turnaround makes it even more important, but um, they have no idea how important it is, you know, um, going to the World Series in both ways. Like we, we even went on the road regional on the road super and went to, um, you know, the World Series and then we've done it home home in the World Series. And you just if you can get to the World Series, the fact that you've been in your own bed for two weeks is a huge difference maker, too. Once you get there, you know, the way if you're on the road for three weeks in a row, it's pretty tough to have your feet under you and really um, hit the ground running once you get to Oklahoma City. This Beth, did I hear you right after the game, too, when you're talking about being at home, you said we get we get what we always wanted. We're home. I saw you walk over to one of your assistants. Did I see that right? Yeah, I mean, I think it is. It's like we were, we're tired of going to Florida State every year. Like we're tired of going there on the road. No offense to them. They earn the right to host. Like I just, we were tired of the committee sending us to Florida State every year. So um, it's nice to get a chance for them to come to our place and, you know, see what we can do here. And I mean, we've beat them at their place and they've beat us at their place. So there's no guarantees because we're at home. We're going to win this thing. That doesn't mean that. But it's nice for a change that they have to drive down the road instead of us going there. Coach, um, in baseball, they put out press releases and they say, you know, Landon Marceau pitches Friday, A.J. Labus Saturday to be determined on Sunday. Does that is that what makes your sport a little different? And do you enjoy that aspect of making the decision of who pitches maybe 30 minutes before the game starts? I mean, I guess they do that from a scouting um, purpose in baseball, like for, so that scouts know when their kids pitch. And that's a big part of their game, right, is they have to let the um, – the professional guys, right? No, when they can come see the pitcher so they can draft them. I don't know why you would play that card though. Like I think about it all the time, like just don't tell them who's going to pitch so they can't sit there and set the machine on 92 with whatever spin rate. I mean, if you have all the numbers they have too on TrackMan and all that stuff, they know the guy's spin rate, velocity, everything. They literally have a machine. They can punch those numbers in. They can practice hitting a curveball at 88 at that spin rate. What? I don't know why you do it. Shelby says uh, they benefit from it as a staff, not sleeping on it the night before and all that. Is that part of it? No. Not really. Um, not really. I, I, I think that maybe for some that's big. I think some kids would probably benefit from knowing. I think everybody's different. Um, but that's just how we do things here. I think um, we're a staff and we're going to put the best person out there for the matchup and I may be doing research on Florida State until what time's the game? Six o'clock until, you know, 5.15 tomorrow. I might be down to the wire trying to make the best decision and put the best matchup out there. And that's just real. Um, I also think it's just a 
card we can play. Like I, our two pitchers that have been throwing a lot, our four pitchers are also different. So, um, you know, I'd rather them not have a chance to prepare for exactly what they're seeing. At least there's still some guests left in it that they can't spend the whole hour hitting a rise ball. They have to spend the hour hitting a drop and a rise. It makes a big difference. It's 50% of the practice time taken away. You talked about the familiarity. Um, do you two kind of have to get out of your head or do you like that preparation? Do you feel that that's what's made you successful to this point? Um, I mean, I think that's why we're good this time of year is that our staff understands how to prepare. Um, I think um, the SEC understands how to prepare a lot. So when you're matched up with another SEC team, that's pretty even. And Florida State is in the ACC. Those guys know how to prepare too. But I think we just do a good job of taking information translating it for what it means for our team and preparing our team based on the information that we're given. And honestly, I think it's probably my favorite part um, of the game is the prep work. I just, I like the puzzle. I like trying to find the spots where we can attack. It's, it's like the game within the game, you know, like it's the challenge of it is trying to crack the code. I think that's probably my favorite part of the whole thing. And that's, you know, why I love calling pitches, trying to find the weakness and crack the code. Uh, Coach, obviously uh, this past weekend, Houston announced their Hall of Fame class and Angel Shamblin uh, is going to get inducted. You coached her in Houston. Your reaction to that? And is there any pitchers you've coached at LSU that has similarities to Angel? Like when I see Shelby, I see some Angel in her. Uh, uh, kind of compare some of your, the LSU pitchers you've had to a the Angel. Yeah, it makes me super emotional just to think about it and just to think about her whole journey, her career, what it has meant. Um, you know, I think she ended up at Houston because I was really stubborn recruiting her. She had both ACLs, so some people passed on her, but we always believed in her. And wow, what a get that was. It truly helped put the University of Houston on the map. Um, she changed the whole program, the whole culture there. Um, so I'm, I hope to be in attendance when she gets the award because she means that much to me. But um, I do see Shelby Sinceri in her. They both do very similar things. They can throw any pitch at any time in any quadrant. Um, I used to always say that about Angel. It's the same thing I say about Shelby. Um, they both could hit. They both could put their team on their back. Um, they're very similar. But I'm, I'm really proud of Angel. Coach, is there any comparison to the teams that you played this season? Florida State re you know, reflects that anybody. And then Sandra Cock is a pitcher. And then uh, that obviously you, you can make make a any comparison if any. Hmm. I don't know if we would make a direct comparison. I mean, the teams that we had in last weekend, they all ran quite a bit the same way Florida State runs. Um, we've seen velocity. We've seen Kaylin Arnold when she pitched at Tennessee. We have faced her several times. So the seniors have seen her multiple times. Obviously, we haven't seen her since. Uh, 2019, but we have seen her before. So I think there are some similarities you can draw. I don't know if you'd match them up exactly to one team, complete team. And you've also done, you know, <laughs> mentioned during the season that, you know, you, you, if it's a matchup with Missouri or whomever, that you have to swing swing with certain teams. This is, a, is this a team that you're going to have to pitch with more so? Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so. Um, I just think this, this time of year, you kind of throw the numbers out the window too. Like, I think there's not, everybody's O and O everybody's trying to win. We know they're good. We know no matter what the numbers say that the kids can hit on their team. I mean, we know that they're talented. So I think you kind of just throw the numbers out the window and everybody just goes out and competes with everything they've got. And some kids just show up in the postseason. you know, I mean, maybe they didn't have the season they wanted. Georgia Clark probably didn't have the season that she wanted, but then shows up and wins us a ball game, biggest game of the year um, on Sunday. And thank goodness we never stopped believing in her and we always will. She's a great hitter. Um, but I, I think you just never know. And you kind of throw some of the numbers out the window this time of year. What are um, the emotions, you know, behind um, Aaliyah, Amanda's um, final games at Tiger Park coming up. Yeah, I think if we try to think about that, we're, we're going to have way too many emotions involved in it. So, um, you know, I think that that is something that no matter no matter if you're worried about it or you're not, their time is going to end. So I think we just enjoy what we have. Don't worry about it and just hope we can send them out the right way.